Hey guys, welcome back to High Tech Tens. Today, we'll talk about a crime predicting AI algorithm. Let's head into it. With 90% accuracy, an algorithm has been developed that can anticipate the next week's crime a week in advance. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is used to predict violent and property crimes by analyzing historical data. The computer model was developed using public data from eight major US cities by data scientists at the University of Chicago. As a result, the model is divisive because it ignores structural biases in law enforcement and the interplay between crime and society. Previously, similar models have been demonstrated to perpetuate racism in police, which might be duplicated by this approach. It's also possible, though, that the researcher's model may be used to highlight the prejudice and should only be used to educate existing enforcement practices. For example, it was discovered that places with lower socioeconomic status may get police attention at a proportionately lower rate than affluent neighborhoods. How does the AI work? From 2014 to 2016, the city of Chicago's historical crime data was used to train the computer model. Crime levels were then forecasted for a time after this training session. There were two types of occurrences used to train it, both of which are less likely to be influenced by enforcement bias. In addition to killings, assaults, and battery, there were also robberies, carjackings, and other property crimes. These crimes were also more likely to be reported to the police in metropolitan areas, where residents have a long history of mistrust for and unwillingness to cooperate with law enforcement. As a result, trends in past crimes may be identified and used to forecast similar crimes in the future. The city is divided into tiles with a diameter of around 1,000 feet, and crime in those regions is forecasted. This is in contrast to past research, which have focused on hotspots of crime that spread to other locations. According to conventional neighborhood or political borders, these hotspots may be biased. Author Dr. James Evans argued that spatial models fail to take into account the city's topography. When it comes to transportation, roadways, sidewalks, railway, and bus routes are all treated equally, as are communication networks. Discovering these relationships is made possible by our model. As the authors write, we highlight the relevance of uncovering city-specific patterns for the prediction of reported crime, which gives a fresh vision of the city's neighborhoods, permits the formulation of original questions, and allows for the evaluation of police activity in creative ways. Using data from several additional US cities, as well as data from Chicago, Researchers published their findings on Monday in the journal Nature Human Behavior. Atlanta, Austin, Detroit, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Portland, and San Francisco were among the cities on the list. Following the model's development, researchers compared how the police responded to occurrences in different socioeconomic zones. They discovered that crimes committed in more affluent regions grew greater police attention and resulted in more arrests than those committed in less fortunate places. In light of this, it raises the possibility of police prejudice in their actions. What we're finding is that when you stress the system, it needs more resources to arrest more individuals in reaction to a crime in an affluent region and pulls police resources away from lower socioeconomic status places," said senior author Dr. Ishanu Chattopadhyay. As a result of these issues, the use of computer models in law enforcement has been a source of debate. After conducting an algorithmic study on gun violence in Chicago in 2016, the city's police department tested a list of persons who were most likely to be engaged in an incident as a victim or offender. Initially, the data were kept under wraps, but it was later revealed that 56% of black males in Chicago between the ages of 20 and 29 were on the list. There are concerns about the new model's use of data that is subject to bias, according to Lawrence Sherman of the Cambridge Center for Evidence-Based Policing. In his words, it might be a reflection of police prejudice in some regions. According to its authors, this technology is not meant to lead police personnel to crime hotspots, but rather to educate existing policing techniques and regulations. 
To allow for further investigations by other academics, the study's data and algorithm were made freely available. We constructed a digital twin of urban surroundings, Dr. Chattopadhyay added. By feeding it data from previous occurrences, it can forecast what will occur in the future. There are certain limits, but we tested it out and it works well. If crime increases in one part of the city or enforcement increases in another part of the city, you can now use this simulation tool to see what occurs. You can observe how the systems change as a result of applying all these various factors. Could a face-reading AI lie detector alert cops when suspects aren't speaking the truth? Artificial intelligence technologies that can expose a suspect's genuine feelings during an interrogation may soon replace the tired cliché of the good cop bad cop dynamic in law enforcement. Micro expressions, a little involuntary facial movement that disclose a person's genuine sentiments and even whether they are lying, would be used in the face scanning system. Faceoft a London-based business has been using a database of 300 million expressions to train an AI on micro-expressions observed on actual people's faces. UK and Mumbai police departments have held meetings to investigate possible practical uses of AI technology. What do you think about this kind of AI? Let us know in the comment section. This brings us to the end of our video, I hope you enjoyed it, hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure that you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.